uh, I saw them at Eric's in Liverpool in 5th of May 1977 and they were my favourite band before that and then they were incredible and me and Paul from Franco's Hollywood, Paul yeah. Rutherford, we started following them in tour, on tour and they used to let everyone in the dressing room and me and Paul were the two funniest and two quickest and Mick fell in love with us kind of, you know, Mick said, oh, I want to come on board the gigs, so he kept putting us on the guest list so we could suddenly have money and we had mates who would take us to gigs because we could take them in, uh, we had access to backstage, then they were playing in London for a week, the Clash were playing, making a film called Rude Boy and they wrote him and didn't turn up and Mick went, you play guitar don't you? I said yeah, he said you're our roadie tonight, I was the Clash's roadie after being a fan a year and a half before, suddenly that I'll stay blue. Your head. In, in the film Rude Boy you can see me in the wind in my pink shirt, uh, white jeans, and basically I look like a Clash roadie, yeah. you know, uh, and Mick has been the best person I ever met in music, he was the first person ever to have real faith in me. Uh, me and him toured together 10 years ago for the Hill for the Justice campaign. We did, I got to sing some Clash songs with Mick, with Stone Road. I am, because I'm so funny and sarcastic, and I never buy it out. So, they basically- We're we'll getting beer back afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I, I, I've, got, I've always got on with people, even if, you know, there were stories about the Liverpool bands in the 80s, like Teardrop Explodes, Bunny Man. Those guys, Christians, China Crisis, OMD. We all put stories up that we all hated each other. And in fact, I love them all. I love every single one of them. Pete Burns, I was in bands with. Wow. And he's amazing. He was a warrior, you know. And he was terrifying. Because we all thought we were rebels in our punk rock game. Yeah. Somebody goes, what's Then he's further? just, you know, the fact that he walked, if you walk around anywhere now dressed like Pete, he would be getting yeah. attention and possibly aggression. Walking around Liverpool full of dockers in the late 70s, early 80s. He's just, he's, he was remarkable and I've dedicated songs to him when we play. I love our gang, I love all of them. I love Manchester guys. In fact, I kind of love all the guys I've met, bar maybe two. And that's not bad because I've met a million and a half people. You're not going to tell us who you are. I am. <laughs> <laughs> who? Well, you, who well, you'll be interviewing that? them afterwards, won't you? No, what are you messing? I'm joking. No, no, mostly people are great and the ones who aren't, you forget. You know, if you want to have a laugh about it, I'll take yeah. the mickey out of them so my memory will be going away, going, put him straight all out of it, you know. No, mostly, I was quite nervous last week because I don't know a lot of the acts who were on last week. I, I mean, I know who they are, but I don't know them. And everyone made it so easy, songs. you know. That girl Becky out there, me and her work with the KLF. I still work with yeah. the KLF with Bill Drummond and, and Jimmy. And uh, Bill got us to form a band with four strangers and do a live gig two days later with a song none, none of them we even you could play. And Becky was our stylist because she's a she was a KLF fan and Bill brought her in. Yeah. Uh, and that's I, I love working with them because you get challenged. It's not just what I would normally do. I have big adventures and I love adventures. You know I love finding things to do. I like uh, I, I, like I said earlier I treat everyone like me mate. I used to get stick for it off people saying, you know, why do you talk to them? Said, I, I, you don't know who they are, what they're going to do, and it's not what, it's about them. And it's also about me. me I just feel, I get, I'm getting this feeling that you're the type of guy walking to a pub and buy a pint because I've just had a, Hang on, I don't an awful, pint. I would buy yeah, a yeah, pint. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've had an awful day at work, I've got in for a pint after work, I sit down, and you're the guy that you come and have an attitude. I, well, that's a nice thought. I, but, you know, the songs I've written. I've been trying to encourage people and support people in our hard times. I've written love songs. I've written, you know, angry songs. But the story of the blues, for example, was a song when Liverpool was having a hard time. It was a song saying to people, you don't listen to all the critics, don't listen to people put you down. Just rise up again, you know. Yeah. And come back was a song again about Liverpool saying to people, don't leave. Everyone was leaving in the eighties because they got better work in London or anywhere. So you come back and fight for your place you love, you know, but it's also, they're also love songs, you know, they, if you believe in something, you fight for it, you know what I mean? And I'm one of them who does that, you still cause trouble if I can. <laughs> but all happy to Life would be boring if you did, wouldn't exactly. it? Exactly. What do you, what do you think of like the modern music we're getting nowadays, the chart music, is anybody you like? I love Lizzo. I love yeah. her. Like, there's a lot of women. We've had a few say that this week. Really? Yeah. yeah. I think she's great. I think some of these guys, like Evan Seventeen, are still doing great stuff. It's not about the music for me, though. It's about, again about that experience. So I would. I used to like 10, 12 years ago. I'd with the Zootons or the Coral. You know, we see them out, and we're all mates in Liverpool. The music gang. 
But actually, the world I inhabit is what I miss, if I miss anything. And that's always the people. Well, there are still great people around. This is great, you know, they're great. It's all, you know, I'm interested in the life as much as the what's going on. I don't care who sells more records than who, you know, I never did. Some of my favorite records sold less copies than I did. I do have a thing that when, every time I had a record in the charts, that record was higher than David Bowie. And that's all that matters. I beat that Bowie. Your... He didn't have any records out at the time, but <laughs> nevertheless, I was higher because he was my all time hero, you know, originally, he, oh, you know, he's the one who, I learned songs by when Black I wanted to start. Inspiration. Yeah, totally, you know. And I love his last couple of albums. But yeah, to me, it wasn't about charts and success. I've been skint a lot of the time. I took time off between records. I brought me back in 1991 and made records again five years later. I, I've done, you know, I've had a lot of ups and downs. However, it wasn't, I didn't miss being on telly or any of that. I missed hanging out with people. I, so I went, like the social life. Yeah, yeah, as well. Yeah, because you do, you encourage each other, you know, and it's part of what you are and what I am. I am Pete Wiley, the mighty one, you know. Psychologists say you should know your more than that. You should just get back to your inner self. And I say, it's pretty good being Pete Wiley. Yeah. You know, don't need to anymore. Yeah, I like it, you know. And I don't want to ever act up uh, because of who I am. You know, that, do you know who I am? Yeah. We had one mate do that in the club in Liverpool. He walked in, he said, in from another band. He was here this weekend and he said, yeah, he wouldn't let him in. He said, do you know who I am? And the fella said, yeah, that's why you're not getting in. That's the lesson, you know what I mean? That's a proper... It's a deal with it, put yourself it, down, you know. So, yeah, I miss, I don't miss, because I'm still in it. The hanging out, the seeing people, I'm writing all the time, I'm recording. I've just done a deal to reissue all my stuff with Chrysalis. Uh, which starts early next year. So the reissue of Story the Blues with some magical new bits. Your station.